from St. Peter's, Rome, to the furthest corners of the Catholic world, the passing of His Holiness Pope Pius XII is mourned by countless millions. To the Vatican City, the thoughts and prayers of all who owed spiritual allegiance to him are now directed. It was here throughout his noble tenure of the Supreme Pontificate that vast crowds so often gathered to receive his blessing. Here now the scene is repeated, but today every section of the people, united in their common sorrow, offer up their prayers that he may rest in peace. These pictures typify the public appearances of His Holiness. Indeed, it was through the medium of the film that Pope Pius XII could be seen by so many people in every part of the world. His ascetic, upright figure was as familiar as the great strength of character and faith which upheld him through every test and trial of his life. No one, according to worldwide judgment, was better fitted to undertake and fulfill the immense responsibility of the supreme pastor of the Universal Church and Vicar of Christ on Earth. Pope Pius XI died in 1939, and the preparations for the election of his successor included, of course, the making of his robes. The mitre received its finishing touches, the magnificent vestments are completed. Meanwhile, something like 200,000 people assembled near St. Peter's waiting to hear the result of the balloting at the Conclave of Cardinals. On the first day of voting after the third ballot, white smoke arises from the Sistine Chapel, a sign that the choice has been made. And the choice of the Cardinals was the Papal Secretary of State, Cardinal Eugenio Pacelli. Again, a vast throng filled the precincts of St. Peter's on the day of coronation. The election of Cardinal Pacelli, who now took the name of Pius, out of veneration for the 10th and 11th of that name, was clearly most popular. He was the first pope to be publicly crowned in St. Peter's Square for almost a hundred years. The climax of the coronation is the placing of the triple crown, which is the symbol of supreme sovereign power. His Holiness Pope Pius XII was crowned on March the 12th, a few days after his 63rd birthday. He was the first Roman, as against Italian, Pope since Innocent XIII, the first Secretary of State to follow his predecessor since Clement IX. Now a notable occasion after World War II, Allied troops being received in audience by His Holiness. With our heart's affection, we bless you and all you dear ones at home. You know very well, you have had experience now of the dangers and uncertainties of life in the midst of a war. Make one thing certain, that you Keep always close to God. For all who followed the way of truth, there was the papal blessing, just as he always condemned atheistic totalitarianism. The Pope's escort, the historic Swiss Guard, provide one of the most picturesque features of the majesty surrounding the Pope in the Vatican. The splendor attached to his exalted office was always in evidence at his public appearances as, for example, when born in procession in the Sedia Gestatoria with chamberlains on either side carrying the ostrich feather fans or flambelli. The magnificent ceremonial maintained by the papal court derives from ancient tradition and the relationship between the papacy and the highest secular powers. The occupant of the papal throne holds authority over the whole church and he has the sole right of appointing cardinals. Pope Pius XII wielded this supreme power with the wisdom and the humility that endeared him to every believer, whatever his station or degree. At his coronation, the Pope is addressed as the father of the kings and princes, the pastor of the universe. 
Pius XII, the 262nd occupant of the chair of St. Peter, nobly upheld his holy office with all the dignity implicit in so high a calling. In his early life, he acquired a vast knowledge of theology, canon law, ecclesiastical procedure and diplomacy. He could speak seven languages with fluency. Yet in spite of all these rare attainments, in spite of the important diplomatic work which occupied much of his life, he always remained close to the people. He was always accessible. Gifted beyond most of his contemporaries, his priestly piety, the humility of his approach and his total sincerity resulted in the maintenance of a close personal sympathy with all those with whom he came in contact. Indeed, there has never been a Pope who has impinged so closely on the lives of individual Catholics throughout the world. As a man, he won their love just as he received their homage as Supreme Pontiff. An example of Pius XII's personal popularity, in addition to the reverence for his position, is afforded by this picture of him as he places a skull cap or zucchetto on his head and then returns it as a memento to someone in the crowd. How eager and proud was each recipient. Every time His Holiness appeared among the people, thousands would gather to see and cheer him. Looking at such pictures, perhaps we tend to take it all for granted. But they are, in fact, evidence not only of the tribute due to the Supreme Pontiff, but also their evidence of the simple humanity of Eugenio Pacelli, Pope Pius XII. In his later years, Grave illnesses were followed by thanksgiving for almost miraculous recovery. Even in his youth, his health had never been robust, and it's not surprising that the burdens and responsibilities of the Holy See through all the years of difficulty and danger brought him more than once into the shadow of death. On every occasion, prayers that he might be spared were offered up in churches throughout the world. Through his own firm faith, and through the faith of countless others, he survived to carry on his selfless and devoted work for church and people. Now Pius XII has passed from this world and the world mourns him. His work on earth is done. Time alone can truly assess the sum total of his accomplishment. Peace among men was always in the forefront of his aims. In his Easter Sunday addresses were fervent appeals for peace, peace between nations and peace among all classes of men. The legend on his coat of arms as a cardinal read, peace is the work of justice. Throughout his life he strove unswervingly to attain for mankind that greatest of blessings. Ote benedicto Dei Omnipotentis, Patri et Fili et Spiritus Sancti, descendat super vos et maniat sempre. Amen.